Hello, today we're talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the one and only movie from this franchise directed by Mike Newell. I think it's so interesting to see a series like Harry Potter and all the different directors that put their own spin on the movies, but ultimately they all achieved the same thing and they were all on the same path towards an endpoint. The series is brilliant. And then to look at something like, I don't know, Star Wars, for example, where there wasn't one succinct vision and these directors were almost fighting over what they wanted Star Wars to be. It's just interesting to look at the two very drastic sides of the spectrum. So yeah, the Goblet of Fire. I totally forgot about the old geezer that gets toasted in the beginning of this movie. <laughs> Then there's a cool part at the International Quidditch Games. They have a little tiny tent, but when you go inside, it's huge. One of the Quidditch teams at this event is the Irish. If you pause the movie as soon as they introduce these Irish Quidditch players, you'll realize that a bunch of them are just old dudes. Like, what? What? Apparently people are just playing this incredibly dangerous sport up until their 60s. So, that's interesting. <laughs> Then these death metal KKK Death Eaters come out of nowhere and they start blasting the place. It started blasting, bam, wow. bam. And then Harry Potter gets knocked unconscious. This would be a perfect time to snatch the kid up, right? Like, I know this is like the movie where Voldemort comes back, but um, I guess they just missed him there. He's just lying there, but conveniently his friends find him first. And then these good wizards pop out of nowhere and blast the kids without confirming whether or not they're evil or not. They're just like, all right, blast them. <laughs> But the kids duck just in time, so lucky for them. So then we get introduced to the Bobatons, or these French girls in blue. And their introduction is hilarious. They do these weird like moans while they're dancing down the aisle. It's very weird. <laughs> Then the Sigma grind set Durmstrang dudes come out of nowhere. <laughs> I love how all of the wizards are female in France and all the wizards are male in Bulgaria. Bulgaria, lots of testosterone, very manly. France, very petite, very girly. You know, lots of women, no men. Hagrid keeps up his tomfoolery in this one as well. He accidentally stabs Professor Flitwick through the hand with a fork because Big Lady makes his wand hard. Mad-Eye Moody makes his first appearance in this movie and his acting is brilliant. So yeah, the big thing in this movie is the Goblet of Fire. These kids who are of a certain age have to put their names into the goblet and the goblet magically chooses who it wants to compete in the games. Harry Potter's name is randomly in the goblet and the teachers come to the conclusion, hey, he's not of age and this makes it unfair to the other schools because Hogwarts now has two people from the school contending. But hey, the goblet says so, and the goblet doesn't make mistakes. So Harry has to compete. What? It's so dumb. Bladur. Yeah, Harry Potter has no choice. He has to attend this incredibly dangerous tournament because Magic Cup says so. We do what Magic Cup says. McGonagall is the only person with any sense and she thinks it's stupid and Harry should not attend, I guess. But yeah, um, he attends anyway, obviously. They take the fake news shit from the last movie and amp it up to a hundred in this one. Rita Skeeter the cunt. Well, I call her the caring, sharing face of investigative journalism. She's in this movie. She's a reporter and she doesn't give a shit what people tell her. She just reports what she wants to report and then people eat it up. Eat them up, eat them up, beat them up, beat them up. Also, Ron is a salty baby bitch in this movie. Man. Little baby, little, little, little baby, baby man, baby, little baby, 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 baby man. He just can't handle that Harry Potter is famous. Yeah, that's me. No way he's like Harry Potter's stupid friend. Even though he had no issue with it during the first two movies, he was just as famous then. He suspects that Harry put his own name into the goblet and he's lying to him about it because Harry is obviously very big headed. And what does this famous kid want? More fame, except he doesn't. In fact, in both of the previous movies, Harry has done nothing to even suggest that he likes the fame. He keeps his ego in check very easily. And what's weirder is that Ron doesn't even have an issue with it until Harry's name was randomly pulled from the Goblet of Fire. I guess he's jealous because Harry's name is always in the limelight and he's like always the famous one. But still, dude, come on, man. He's your friend. Believe him when he tells you that he didn't put his name in the goblet because he tells him that and Ron doesn't believe him. He's just like, yeah, sure you didn't. <laughs> Harry has no reason to lie to you, Ron. Like, what the hell, man? Why would he even want to attend 
This is a super dangerous and scary tournament. Like what? Ron wins worst friend of the year in this movie. Then there's the part when Moody turns Malfoy into a ferret because he was about to cast a spell on Harry who had his back turned. <laughs> And he uses magic to force the ferret down Crab's pants. So Drago got a nice good look at Crab's massive dick. So <laughs> I wonder if that impacted their friendship at all. I've seen things. So I went ahead and asked him. Yeah, I asked Crab how it impacted their friendship. And this is what he had to say. Elvis, is, is this going to be private? Yeah, it's a private message. You're not going to show anyone this. It's like therapy for me. Obviously, you know me, I'm crap. Um, I'm still at Hogwarts. I'm still going there. But there's, I've, I've had a lot of traumatic events happen to me since going to Hogwarts. I'm my whole life and I've been to Azkaban and I've had a lot of trauma. But I must admit, the day that has stuck with me ever since was the day Madame Moody turned my best friend into a ferret, okay? And not only did he turn him into a ferret, he put him down my pants. And ever since that day, Malfoy still smells like booze, okay? He can't get the smell off of him. He's traumatized. He tries to play hard, but he's traumatized. Part of me thinks he enjoyed it though, because it was a struggle to get him out. It's like he wanted to stay there. But ever since then, I've not been able to look him in the eyes. He hasn't looked me in the eyes ever since. We just we hang around each other, but we don't speak. It's an unspoken thing. We, you know, we don't, it's, we've never recovered from it. And I don't think we ever will, ever. So uh, I know this is a private message. You're not going to show anyone this, right? I, I trust you. So I can talk to you as a wizard to a fellow wizard. I assume you are a wizard. Yeah, so I'll open up to you and I'll be honest about it. Um, and on a separate note, though, I would also like to say, even up here in Hogwarts, we're down with your channel. I've been subscribed to you since 2015. Huge flipping fan. So I was surprised when I got this opportunity. Um, one of my favorite things as well about you, uh, well, my favorite show you did, episode you did, sorry, was the Asian Anision interview. I thought that was brilliant when you went out and you visited them and stuff. But yeah, I'm a huge fan on a separate note. Huge fan. Um, so so is uh, Goyle and the rest of us. We watch it at Hogwarts, man. We, we're, we're tuned into YouTube. But yeah, I've never recovered ever. Um, Till this day and i don't think malfoy has evil we're just it's just not the same but yeah so i'm gonna keep this one quick and i want to go but keep up the good work elvis man i look forward to your next upload um huge fan crabs on your side yeah you're on a very slivering member so anyone tells you anything or they want to put bad comments they've got me to answer to yeah it goes malfoy crab goyle and elvis the alien and if you ain't subscribed to him what the fuck are you doing subscribe Take care, adios. Thank you so much, Jamie Waylett, for being the only person that accepted my cameo. It means a lot. Then we get the first game of the tournament. Basically, these kids have to retrieve a golden egg from a dragon. It's insane. Like, what the hell? You might as well just put them in front of a firing squad. <laughs> it's pretty, very dangerous. I'm glad I'm not. And they all succeed. What? How? And apparently they can't use the spell Accio, you know, to like retrieve the egg. They can't say Accio egg and the egg will come to them. I read online somewhere that there's a counter spell put on the eggs. So the kids couldn't use that spell to get them. So if the kids can't use spells to get the egg, then they just have to like walk over and get it, right? <laughs> I guess they could try like stunning the dragon or something with a spell. Is that allowed? Can you do that? At no point do they explain why a student can't just be like, Accio egg, and then the egg will come to them. So instead, Harry says Accio broom, and his broom comes to him, and he flies around, and he gets the egg that way. This part is so fine to me because this dragon, who is the most dangerous dragon, breaks free from its restraints and it chases Harry outside of the arena and they just fly around. This dragon could have easily just eaten Harry and none of the teachers try to save him or do anything to help him. It's so weird. <laughs> Like what? They're totally fine with people dying in this tournament? Oh my God. And Harry nearly dies multiple times throughout this part. But yeah, he miraculously survives and he gets the egg. 
So I guess luck is on a side. When Professor McGonagall is teaching everybody how to dance and she forces Ron to dance with her, ah, that scene is awesome. I loved it. <laughs> I had to try to teach Rupert to dance the other day. That was pretty strenuous. On my waist! Never gonna let him forget this, are you? Never. In this movie, Ron has the least amount of game I've ever seen in a human being. He's trying to find a date to the Yule Ball, and he's not sure who to ask. When his best friend is Hermione, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> he doesn't realize this until later, until finally he turns to her and he's like, Hey, Hermione, you're a girl. Do you want to go? <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Pathetic. It's one thing for a bloke to show up alone. For a girl, it's just sad. The fact that she actually ends up with him is insane to me. It's unbelievable. The next game is the mermaid challenge. Basically, they take someone you love, put them into a comatose state, and shove them two miles below the ocean. And it's your job to go down there and save them. And guess what? There's like a thousand deadly mer people just swimming around, and they could easily kill you or the person you love. So good luck. Never mind just finding some way to breathe underwater for that long. But um, yeah, that's the game. Fleur Delacour, I think that's how you say her name, she gets disqualified from this game. So Harry takes it upon himself to save the person that she should have saved. So what, if you're disqualified, you just have to leave them in the ocean forever or what? Like, because she thanks Harry at the end. Like, she's really grateful that he saved her. I'm assuming they would have allowed her to go down there after the game? but I'm not sure. And what about these poor bastards that are forced under the ocean just because they happen to be a loved one of one of these athletes? That would suck. If I were a family member or a friend to somebody who just entered the Goblet of Fire games, I would leave the country <laughs> because I don't want to end up at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> I really like the Mad-Eye Moody twist in this movie, especially how you find out information through the pen sieve. It is really fun. He's drinking polyjuice potion throughout the movie, but upon your first watch, you obviously just think he's an alcoholic. This works a lot better than in the previous movie when Harry was just hit by a rock that came through the window randomly and then they forgot about it. <laughs> like if someone threw a rock at me through my window, I would go out to see who did that, you know? I'd be like, what the hell, dude? I wouldn't just be like, oh, well, that happened. On with my day. <laughs> I guess the Death Eaters are also Nazis in this movie because Professor Igor Karkaroff, who's like the leader of the Bulgarian guys, he gives a double Nazi salute in this scene. So that's weird. I mean, they were wearing those pointy hats before, so... And they do hate muggles. So I guess they're kind of like the Wizarding World version of Nazis. But did you have to give them the same salute? It's weird. The last trial of the Goblet of Fire is the biggest hedge maze in existence. And not only that, this maze is a huge asshole. It constantly changes the paths within the maze. If you're standing in a path that's being changed, the maze will just swallow you. It will also try and curse and alter the minds of the people in the maze, which happens to Victor Crumb. Who designed these challenges? Oppenheimer? Like, what the fuck? So yeah, obviously at the end, they meet Voldemort after Cedric and Harry touch the goblet at the same time. Cedric is killed by Voldemort. Harry is able to escape and he brings Cedric's body back with him. I gotta say, Robert Pattinson did a pretty good job in this movie. He didn't have that many lines, but the parts that he was in, you know, he did fine, I thought. He's definitely the most iconic Hufflepuff. I mean, obviously he doesn't have a lot of competition, but you know, again, put some respect on Susan Bones. Cedric's death is very sad, and his father's reaction to finding his dead son is heartbreaking. Because he sees them come back, and he's overjoyed, like, oh my god, yes, we might have won. And then he finds out that his son is dead, and his reaction is very believable. That's my son! This is my boy! <laughs> the whole Goblet of Fire being a port key that teleports the people who touch it to Voldemort was kind of dumb. It's kind of a massive pain in the ass for Barty Crouch Jr. because he spends the entirety of this movie pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody, so he has to constantly drink Polyjuice Potion, he has to teach classes, and at the same time, make sure that Harry will win the Goblet of Fire. You put my name in the Goblet of Fire. You bewitched Crumb, but you, you, you. Which is kind of ridiculous, right? Like. He could have easily lost. I guess they got lucky, but whatever. <laughs> like, it makes for a cool twist in the story, but in reality, I think it would have been a lot easier if he made Harry's cup at dinner a port key instead, you know? I think that'd be a better plan, a more foolproof plan, 
you know? Harry's probably going to touch the cup to get a drink. But oh my god. Yeah, sure. Make the port key something that's a huge obstacle to touch. And I gotta say, it's pretty hilarious that a Death Eater was behind Harry surviving pretty much every single one of these games. <laughs> like, thanks, Barty Crouch Jr. Nice job. <laughs> Overall, I really like this movie. I think Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and Emma Watson's acting have improved since the last movie. And yeah, overall, pretty solid movie. Not my favorite, but it was fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, the links to all of the Harry Potter videos will be in the description, as well as the video that I made on the Fantastic Beasts movies, which thankfully remained monetized. I don't always lose. <laughs> If you like Harry Potter, you know, fantasy and sci-fi, things like that, then there's a good chance you'll like my clothing line, Alien Clothing, A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N clothing.com. We sell a bunch of really cool designs over there that I think you might like. So check those out if you haven't. That's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N clothing.com. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.